Formula One is back. We start right here at the 20th Bahrain Grand Prix for our first race weekend of the season. And after three days of testing last week, there are plenty of questions and some may just be answered this weekend. But first, welcome to Weekend Warm Up. And joining me for our first weekend warm up of 2024 in what has become quite a chilly Bahrain International Circuit paddock, Will Buxton, Julian Palmer, and Lawrence Bretto alongside me. And we are back. Testing felt like inset days, Will, didn't it, really? This now feels like we're properly back to school. It does indeed, but as you said, a lot of questions still after those three days of preseason testing. We've seen a little bit out of the teams, not everything. They will have gone away over these last few days, crunched the data. They'll all know where or whereabouts they expect to be. It's where everybody else is in relation to them. I can't wait to see the cars out on track. Can't wait to see our first competitive sessions of the season. Julian, how's the atmosphere been in the paddock today? Everyone buzzing to be back. Yeah, everyone is. It's, it's busy. It was actually quite subdued last week. Everyone was uh, buried away looking at data or debriefing, and it was, it was quite quiet for testing. We're going to get 20 cars on track tomorrow, which is exciting, and it's the first meaningful action as well. So, yeah, it's, it's been really bustling today. Do get in touch with us. Yeah, I can't speak today. Do get in touch with us. You need an inset day. I, know, I do. Hashtag F1 Live. Um, Lawrence, we'll come to you in a minute for um, the long-awaited 60-second recap, which is back for another season, baby. But first, how are you feeling ahead of the first race weekend? Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Like the boys were saying, testing, you don't really know what's going on. Do you? And like Julian said, only 10 cars out on track. So I'm looking forward to everyone getting together. I've kind of got my ranking of where I think everyone's stacking up i think we've got them as well i want to see who's gonna come true we were forced to <laughs> forced. go early and, and put them nail them down on paper no, which i'm not just for this weekend for the entire for the season. season could you please predict how the developmental curve will be for the next 10 months please? Uh, i can't wait to see all of that go out a bit later on that will uh, no doubt cause some debate amongst you all um, but now lawrence this is perhaps one of the hardest recaps i think of the whole year because it's not just been one or two weeks or even three weeks it's been however many months three months away from the paddock months, along yeah. 90 days or so 97 days Dabby. he's recapping <laughs> oh, Dabby. Good luck. are you actually i thought you were yep. going to do a whole season recap in that would have been an impressive thing wasn't it? well lawrence take it away abby dabby well thanks for all voting me in to do this but obviously as ever max verstappen starting on pole alongside charles leclerc for the first corner or so, Charles gave it a good old go and he pressured Max all the way through that first lap. Thereafter though, Max kind of ran away with it and controlled the race from the front. Further back, there was some pretty good pace in the Mercedes and that was important because they were in a tight battle for P2 in the Constructors' Championship. George Russell putting a lot of pressure on Lando Norris. They would go on to have a very strong battle until it was completed in the pit stops where George managed to get ahead. Further up the road, Checo Perez was looking like he was set for P2, but as we're about to see, he was he had a nice little battle with the Lando Norris's McLaren. They touched, he ended up with a five second penalty, which ultimately dropped him back to P4. Charles Leclerc got second, George Russell made the podium, and that was enough to give Mercedes P2 in the championship. Max Verstappen won another race, 19 out of 22 that year. There was a nice little battle just towards the end, Yuki Tsunoda going up against Lewis Hamilton but Yuki managed to hold on to that. He got P8 ahead of Lewis Hamilton with Lance Stroll P10. My wow. goodness me, someone... The micro detail on that, <laughs> wow. Someone has been practicing. Well all done, of, Lawrence. All of which means nothing anymore. <laughs> yeah, look, that was oh, then... Oh, that's not entirely true because Alpha Tauri pushed all the way towards the end of last season. That impacts this season. So actually, that means something for this year. There we go. They're now RB as well. Yeah. Uh, that was then. This is very much now. Um, and coming into the paddock today, we do have some breaking news to bring you from Red Bull GmbH. The statement has come out. The independent investigation into the allegations made against Mr. Horner is complete and Red Bull can confirm the grievance has been dismissed. The complainant has a right of appeal. Red Bull is confident the investigation has been fair, rigorous and impartial. The investigation report is confidential and contains the private information of the parties and third parties who assisted in the investigation. Therefore, we will not be commenting, for, commenting further out of respect for all concerned. Red Bull will continue striving to meet the highest workplace standards. Coming into this season, they are certainly seemingly the pace setters as well, aren't they? Well, testing seemed a very good few days. Max Verstappen trying to play it somewhat cool, couldn't keep the smile off his face though. 
No, Max actually said he wanted fewer laps in the car um, because it just it, it ran really, really well for them. And look, Red Bull have been the benchmark team uh, since the regulation change a couple of seasons ago. Everybody's starting to catch up, and Adrian Newey has been on the record and said, look, we could have just done a third iteration of this world-beating car. Instead, they've moved the goalposts again with a complete revolution on the car adopting some of the philosophies that we've seen on the mercedes over the last few years which mercedes couldn't actually make work already massive developments in the pipeline for this car but it looked bulletproof it looked fast and even on its quick laps i don't think max ever went above 60 percent oh ominous but look when i spoke to sergio perez today he was very much saying that the gap isn't as big as we think we'll hear from him in a moment sergio perez then how do you think jolian he can match up to max verstappen I think it's going to be tough. I, I, and I think, I mean, genuinely looking from testing, the gap between Checo and the Ferraris doesn't seem to be huge. But it's when Max gets in the car again that the gap gets big. And it's, it's how it was last year. And I just think Max is so hooked up in this car from the word go. Like he, he's literally said, I was happy with fewer laps. He got in and very quickly looked at home with it. And even on some of his fastest laps, wasn't using all the curb, uh, was just neat and tidy, no frills. So there's a feeling that the Red Bull car in the hands of Max could be gone again and the rivals have got some long faces in the paddock if they if you ask them about the championship at the moment but i still think there's a fight to be had for for second and checo will be hoping to have a reset after the winter he needs to start well this this weekend mighty impressive the way max verstappen and sergio perez to an extent took to that car as well considering the issues we saw for alpine and for williams and the likes of those teams who had a few technical gremlins to work through i chatted as i said to sergio perez a little bit earlier on about his hopes ahead of this first race weekend Sergio, the whole paddock believing that Red Bull are even up to a second a lap quicker. Um, is that the case? How much confident are you in this car heading into the 2024 season? And how much does it suit you personally as a driver as well? Yeah, I was very comfortable. I think we did a lot of progress during the, the, the testing. I don't believe that we are that far ahead. I, I'm sure that the competition will be even closer than if anything. So I do expect quite a, a tight battle at, at the front. Uh, we're certainly looking good, but... Um, yeah, obviously there are a lot of teams that are looking good. What are the personal goals for you heading into this first race weekend? Just to maximise my opportunities, you know, get a very strong base will be the target and then go from there on. Thank you so much. Good luck. Sergio Perez certainly has a very good foundation beneath him coming into this first race weekend. But look, we, we have to say last season, of course, a lot of the driver market chat was about whether he would hold on to his seat coming into 2024, Lawrence. Looking at that for this season, what are your thoughts on it firstly and who are the contenders who may challenge him for it? Well, he spent a lot of the winter, Checo, just trying to understand why he struggled to get on top of that car last year. I think he started the season off pretty well and then couldn't understand why he lost his way as the year went on. And so obviously through the winter, a big focus of him there was to understand how he can hit the ground running this year because that's when Red Bull are going to be looking at what they're going to be doing with that second seat alongside Max Verstappen for next season. You've got Daniel Ricciardo and Yuki Tsunoda at RB. They're going to be keeping a close eye on them and what they can do you've got Alex Albon floating around as well whether or not that's 2025 it could be into 2026 he could be an option Carlos Sainz is obviously available he could return there I'm not sure that that would be his top option because there are so many options out there but obviously at, at some point they're going to have to make a decision and whether or not Checo's at the top of that list will depend on what he delivers out on track but Checo's got to start start well this weekend it's, it's so important for him because he's gone really well at this circuit before it was the, the home of his first win on the different layout and he's done well at the start of seasons before. So everyone's talking about the second Red Bull seat. But if he can come in and, and start strongly on tracks that he's actually very good at the start of the year, then maybe we won't be talking about it so much heading towards the, the summer where the talks normally would happen. And if he doesn't, you know, what's to stop Red Bull? And we've seen them do it in the past. What's to stop them from switching drivers around mid-season? If Checo doesn't step up to the plate in these early races, I could envisage a driver switch at mid-season, throw Daniel in for a few races, see if he is as good as he once was and whether he could cut the mustard in that team. If he can't, then they're going to have to look elsewhere. It's going to be fascinating to see how this driver market will play out this season. Some 12 drivers out of contract. And, of course, Lewis Hamilton moving to Ferrari for 2025 has very much kick-started uh, what could be one of the silliest seasons we've seen in a while. Back to the pace of Red Bull. Who do you boys believe will be their closest challengers coming into, I guess, the first couple of races this season? Ferrari. Ferrari. Yeah, Would you Ferrari. Care to elaborate? Uh, <laughs> I thought we were just going to have a, have a quick Love run through. Word, but... uh, Ferrari looked really great during testing. Not not only do they have a, a really fast car, a really compliant car, um, 
but also they appear to have got on top of their woes from last year, which was that it was lightning quick on a Saturday, but couldn't maintain that pace during a Grand Prix. Too heavy on its tyres. They appear to have resolved that. Some people talking about the fact they may have gained over a second in terms of race pace, but also that that race pace maintains its consistency. It's easy to forget that Ferrari were the best qualifiers at the end of last year. Three poles in the last five. I think it was five from the last seven or four from the last seven poles. Uh, they were flying with both drivers looking quick as well. So their one lap pace was actually very good. It's the race pace that's been perennially a, a weakness for them. The big thing they've done this winter seems to be make the car more consistent. That's across different winds. It's quite breezy. It was last week as well. And the car was so settled across wind angles, which has been such a, an issue for them. And that means it should be better on a race run. If it's more consistent, the drivers know what they're getting into when they're turning into a corner. They're not having the small slides. And that's the sort of thing where incrementally through a Grand Prix, it builds up and they can't live with Red Bull. I am more confident that they've, that they've taken a, a good step. I think throughout most of last year, you had Carlos and Charles going, they were getting the car to the limit and then it was becoming very unpredictable and then they were kind of reticent to really push the car. This year, straight from the first lap that they were turning, they felt confident and I think that's really important if they're going to try and build on what Jalen and Will were saying about trying to get more out of that car. It does look like they've lost a little bit of one lap pace based on the data that we've done, but I think they'd probably take that if they're much stronger on a Sunday afternoon. When we spoke to Charles Leclerc earlier as well, he was really keen to point out that even though they have a very drivable car, there are still many un unanswered questions about how competitive the car is. And I think the, the sort of uh, what he insinuated there was that he'd rather, in a sense, have a car that might be a little bit more twitchy, a little bit more difficult to drive, but if it's competitive and lightning fast, then they're going to get a bit more return. So that's the balance trade-off for Ferrari, and we'll see how that transpires for this weekend. Mercedes, who would like to take that one up? How do you see them faring for this first weekend, Jolian? Really unknown at Mercedes. I think they were quietly happy with their, with their test, but I didn't see the, the pace, especially again, the one lap pace of the Mercedes car looked to be a little bit away, but the race running was very good. They've made some changes, uh, conceptual changes to the car as well, which could be big in the, in the future months with development pro, uh, progress possible with that, that they were a little bit hamstrung with last year. I'm not, I'm not sold on their one lap pace from what we saw last week, but as we know, going to a race weekend is very different to testing. This, this is it. You know, Mercedes stuck with a philosophy that wasn't working for two years. So they essentially find themselves two years behind the curve on this particular philosophy, which the rest of the paddock have been running for two years. It is going to take them time to get up to speed, to learn about that car. We talk about Red Bull, we talk about Mercedes, we talk about Alpine, three teams who have completely changed their concept for this season and have the most to understand in these early races. Now, look, Mercedes... They're not stupid. They've won multiple world championships, the most successful run in the history of our sport. If anyone can get on top of it, it can be Mercedes. And both drivers saying that their initial feel in the car is more positive than it has been since that regulation changed two seasons ago. So there is a lot of, of I think, happiness there, but it, it's being held back because I, I do think it's going to take them a little bit of time to really discover how much they can draw out of this car and, and really get on top of it. And George Russell reiterating that uh, happiness and the positive noises coming from the Mercedes camp for the W15 and also attributing so much of the concept change as well to Lewis Hamilton, to Lewis's wishes, to the influence and impact that Lewis Hamilton has on that team, even in a year in which, of course, he will begin his last dance uh, with the team he's been with for over 10 years. So interesting to see how this one plays out for Mercedes for this season. Aston Martin, obviously very much the talking point, indeed the headline grabbers from testing for last year with that huge leap from P7 in the standings in 22 right up there to P2 podiums in the first races. Lawrence, your thoughts on Aston? Well, Where I think sit? if we wanted to expect the same kind of step from that they made last year this year, I think that would have been asking a lot and I think they probably realised they couldn't do that kind of thing. But I do think they generally feel they've made a step. I mean, it's difficult because everyone say they've made a step this year and it all depends relative to what they've done uh, against everyone else. But Talking to people who haven't done this paddock, they're putting them around P5. I think they're kind of in that top group of five teams. I think it's exciting. We're talking about a group of five teams towards the top, even if Red Bull are a little bit further ahead of that pack. But I think what will be key here is the development curve through the season. So I think Fernando and Lance have said, you know, great starting package, but what they need is every package that comes through this year, it needs to deliver and not send it back like it did last year. So if they can get on top of that, like that team always used to do when they were forcing India and racing point, they were all able, always able to do that. If they can do that, I think they could be a real challenge this year. Oh, exciting. I think it could be incredibly close, couldn't it, for that battle for P2, 3, 4, 5. Um, 
F1 fantasy, therefore, is going to be a bit of a nightmare for all of us. Um, before we delve into that, let's hear now from our drivers who are making a plea for you to pick them in your team. Why should fans pick you to be in their F1 fantasy team? I think there might be some surprises this year, so we're in for a good year. They should pick me because I'm, I'm not too expensive. I'm a reliable performer. Oh, OK. Uh, you need one to win the race, I guess, to get the points, so hopefully that's me. Fans should choose me because I think I'm relatively affordable. <laughs> I'm good bang for your buck. Um, and uh, make sure to, to put me in for Monza. I would say is a good bet. Silverstone would be a good bet. I don't know my price, but I should be relatively expensive, but at the same time cheap for what I can achieve this year. So I think I'm a pretty good deal. Are we calling you value for money? Value for money. Value exactly. for, money. Value for money. I like that. Lancy Strolly is going to be right on the top. The reason you should pick me for your F1 fantasy team this year is because I'm ready for it. We're going for it. It's going to be a good year, consistent year, and let's see where it takes us. Love that. Big, big play from George. Pick me. This is where we're going to go. Lance, man of few words. <laughs> I like Lance's top. pitch. Yeah, I mean, he said it. Said it how it is. Fernando Alonso, 15.8 million. Cheap. Are cheap. Really cheap. Um, actually, the pricing this year, we were talking about it on the way to the track this morning, pricing this year it's on fantasy tough. has made it so, so difficult. There are so many drivers around the 20 million mark. Lewis is ridiculously cheap when you consider Value the drivers around him. Value for money. When you consider the drivers around <laughs> him, he's less than, I think he's less than 20 million. Yeah, 19.3, I believe, Lewis is. Um, you will this season be able to see with the new features in F1 Fantasy head to heads. You can also see our league table, it's being made public. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, well, no, no one told me that. No, no one told me that. Yeah, yeah, this was, um, I've locked yeah. in my team name as well. Oh, yeah, we'll, we'll get on to that. But, Jolien, this has obviously come for a request from Oops. you after your heroics last <laughs> season no, in winning I might the league. I not to repeat it. Winning a championship is one thing, but going <laughs> on again is a whole new thing. Yeah, so luckily for me, uh, the points reset at the end of the season. So um, we're all on zero. And um, this is not the year. We can all be champion. We're all, yeah. I'm not, I am not going to finish last. Producer Joe telling me to hurry up and get onto McLaren, so I will do so. Uh, McLaren. She told us to chat about fantasy she in the did, first place. She did, but we went over time, as we always do. Uh, will <laughs> McLaren. Very, very good test, uh, especially when you compare it to last year. We can't compare it to last year, I know, because it's completely different. But. I think, I think a great test for them. They didn't bring the softest compound of tyres. It was never about the glory runs for them. All about dialing into the car, all about focusing on this weekend. We've not seen everything from them, but they exited those three days very, very happy with the work done. And I think that's, that's all you can take out of it, really. Yeah, for sure. I spoke to Oscar Piastri earlier, and he uh, reiterated that, saying it's a very similar feeling to that we had at the end of last season. And you look at the way in which they finished the end of last season, super strong. Not necessarily a track that suits the McLaren as much as others perhaps do. Lawrence, you've also had um, some interaction with Oscar Piastri this week on a tennis court. Tell us more. We've got a feature coming about it. Here we go. Uh, yeah, I did. Um, obviously, I take playing sport very seriously. So when I beat Carlos Sainz at squash, that obviously was very good for me. But um, oh, look at that. I actually look like a tennis player there, Oscar. right? I think. Whoa. You missed the ball. Wow. Well, Where's completely that? Completely missed the ball. Missed the ball from? <laughs> I cannot believe of all the shots that they did. They used the shot where Steve, our camera operator, was telling me to throw the ball up just so he could get a close up. Yeah, of course. Oh, actually of hit course. It. A swing oh, and a miss. Right. Absolutely done over there. Right. Interesting. <laughs> okay, that's that's how it went. All right, great wow. stuff. Um, Thanks, guys. Thanks. In all seriousness, so Lando Norris, Oscar Piastri, obviously coming into this race weekend, uh, they're not quite sure where they're going to sit, as most drivers down this paddock are saying. But there is positive noise for McLaren, isn't there? And I think many people putting them certainly top top three, four of their teams into the first part this season. Yeah, I think so. Their one lap pace seemed pretty sensible, but as Will said, they didn't run the soft tyres. They didn't look like they were really turning the wick up for, for one lap. So I, I'm expecting a little more from them uh, on Friday night. The race pace, Oscar did a concerning run in, yeah. on day three. So And that was the only, they, they only had Oscar's day three long running because they had some reliability woes as well with Lando. So question marks on the race pace. It was overall very good in the hands of Lando last year. Oscar struggled a bit more. So I hope that he's managed to get a handle on that because that was really holding him back. On one lap pace, he was he was flying. 
uh, but it looked to be a little more on that trajectory still. That's the question mark, isn't it? Was it, was it Oscar's race pace that was the issue or is it the McLaren's race pace that was the issue? Because he and Fernando out on track at the same yeah. time, same compound tire. Fernando, smooth as you like with the lap times. Oscar dropped. I mean, you are comparing, you know, a rookie in his second season to a two-time world champion, but, but, but is that it, is the level he's in his second season. You can't have a rookie in the second uh, season. A rookie, a ro sorry, you know, a, a rookie coming into his second season. <laughs> For goodness sake, but, boys. But that's, it, but, that's it, but that's it. Is yes. it the driver? Is it the car? And we just For don't sure. know. We don't, we don't. As you mentioned, reliability issues as well for McLaren. So too for Williams. Um, Lawrence, how do you feel they would reflect on their testing? I think they would have gone into testing knowing that what happened to them could have happened because they'd changed so many parts of that car. Yeah. It's a completely different concept. They wanted to get rid of that slippery Williams that was very sensitive to the wind and kind of go for an all-round car. And when you make so many changes, like Will was hinting earlier, then you're going to have these little niggles. I think what was important was they cured them pretty quickly. They had a really strong day three with Alex in the car. They were very happy kind of, kind of come the end of the test. And while I think we shouldn't expect too much for them in the early phases, they're still learning about this car. I think the, the bigger gains, and that's what James Fowles really wants. He wants these big gains for year two, year three, year four, year five, and they've got to make those big changes this year. So I think let's not expect too much of them, but very much in the thick of the midfield. I think the important thing for Williams is that Logan can get onto terms with, with Alex Albon as well, because they did have a really good car at times last year. They could maybe develop towards that this year. The testing looked slightly underwhelming, I, I would say. But if Logan can get towards Alex's pace, which is what the team are hoping, and that's why they've re-signed him, then it doubles their chances of scoring points, basically. And, and Alex single-handedly did, did the work, minus one point last year. Logan looking super fit. He's put a lot of work in at the gym over the winter. Said he put on five kilos, haven't we all? No, just me. <laughs> just me and Logan. But Logan put it on in muscle. I put it on in chocolate and wine. Uh, but no, he does. And he said to me today, I feel the best I've ever felt in, my, in the car, best I've ever felt in myself. There's a good amount of confidence, I think, down at Williams, despite the fact they, they, they sort of stumbled at the start of the test. By the end, they felt really good. There's a bounce in Logan Sargent's step, yeah, that's for sure. I so. followed him walking down the paddock, and he looked like he was just holding himself in new a different trainers. way. It's the extra muscle, <laughs> extra muscle in new, new trainers. trainers, that's what it is. Well, but he just, you know, head was up, chest was out. There was something about him that just said, I'm here for 2024, I'm putting 2023 behind me. Yes, I struggled, but I've learned from that, and I'm, I'm coming back. He looks beefier. He looks visibly yeah. beefier and more confident, I think. And you are, that, I think that's natural. When you're in a rookie, and when you're a rookie coming into your second season, then... You, you know what it's all about. You know testing. You, you're, you're ready and he's to, got to dial to. in. He's got to put in the performance Exactly. Issue. He has to. One of the drivers out of contract at the end of this year. Another one. Well, we'll chat to him a bit earlier on. It's Daniel Ricciardo. Just how good is this car? I think there's lots of people talking about how good you looked in testing. I know it was only testing. The teams say wait till mid-season when the big upgrades are coming. So kind of how are you feeling heading into this season? I, I'm definitely trying to... Yeah, trying to uh, kind of calm people down. Look, it's, it's, we're only a few days away now from really seeing the performance of everyone. And I think some people are, yeah, probably getting maybe the wrong idea about how good it really is. I think our ambition is to be very good, of course. And I think we will improve as the season goes on, as you say, with updates and things. But look, this weekend coming into it, target would be obviously a Q3 at a points. Do I stand here and say we are absolutely there yet? It's close, but I'm not, uh, yeah, I'm not this like quietly confident person knowing I've got like a podium in the back pocket. We, uh, we realistically still have a bit to go, um, but still curious to know how we go and uh, obviously qualifying in a couple of days time. So we'll see. And then everyone will see where we are, but we're not like, don't get me wrong, we're not like bluffing or anything like this. I think testing was that. I think we're, we're in the midfield somewhere where that is, who knows. <laughs> okay, so for best of luck this weekend, thank you. Thank you. Daniel Ricciardo really trying to just play down all of our expectations, make all of that hype go away, quieten the noise, and, and look, maybe, but I think it's fair to say that RB believe, and indeed the Paddock thinks they've made a step up, Will, up to potentially in the midst of that midfield. I think they're gonna be hoping they'll make it into Q3. Uh, on Friday night. I think I think that is, that's the real hope there. As Daniel says, just trying to dampen expectations mm. a little bit, which worries me because I've put him in my fantasy team. <laughs> um, but, yeah, look, they've, they've made big strides compared to where they were this time last year. Definite big strides. They're not going to be at the bottom of the pack. Where exactly they filter in, 
ramp P6, P7, P5. I mean, who, honestly, who knows? Who knows? We may find out a little bit more this weekend. Uh, we'll see, though. Let's hear now from Esteban Ocon. The car concept is it's pretty much entirely brand new for you guys this season. And obviously, we're expecting these cars to stay for the next two seasons. How much are these early races going to be essentially extended testing sessions for you guys to really get a handle on this car before you can start to move forward? Yeah, exactly, because it's, it's not uh, a usual thing, you know, to be changing concept, you know, through a, a rule, um, you know, just uh, as a stable thing. So it's, uh, yeah, it's going to be mega important, you know, to just uh, um, have a look at everything that we can to, to optimize the package that we have in hands. And, you know, as, uh, as my side uh, driving, you know, I'm going to be focusing on every little detail I can to, to be able to extract the max out of the car. Good luck. Thanks. Oof, it seems like it may be a tough start to this 2024 season for Alpine. Uh, Jolien, coming to you, obviously a brand new concept of car. So much has changed. Only your steering wheel, as you told us in testing, has, has actually survived the cull that Alpine had done to their 23 Challenger. And back here with 24 machinery that is brand new. Uh, I mean, how long is this going to take for Alpine to get to grips? I mean, you'd hope that they could be... Up, up to speed with it relatively well right now three days of testing they got actually plenty of mileage in i was trackside and i thought the car they were constantly looking heavy with the car like they were running fuel and i think they were on days one and two but it turns out i think they are actually quite heavy with the car in terms of their overweight with it which is an immediate problem especially when they've changed concept bought a lot of new components and they're not actually down to the weight limit which is the the rumor going around with that team it was an issue for everyone a couple of years ago but everyone else has got on top of it and that's inherent time loss the drivers are not particularly happy with it there's a, a lot of concern faces at alpine and they're really playing down expectations the hope as esteban said is that they can progress with it understand it use these early races to to develop and find a better place but uh, they're not going in my fancy team for, for race one that's fair to say uh lawrence coming to you on kick sauber uh, a new obviously another new era for that team as well changes galore uh livery has completely changed it looks amazing out on track what have you made of their testing and their prospects ahead of this first race this is another team that have made dramatic changes to the car they kind of wanted to dump last year's concept because they kind of felt they hit a roof the developments they were adding weren't really giving them the big gains from track to track and so it wasn't really bang for their buck so talking to valtteri and joe today they do feel like they've made a big step i think the car feels a little bit more like an all-rounder valtteri said that the team have made the biggest step that he's seen over a winter this time around. I think that bodes well with his experience. Whether or not they can kind of pull themselves off the bottom two or three teams remains to be seen, because I guess teams we were just talking about, maybe apart from Alpine, all look like they progressed pretty heavily. So it's going to come down to who does the best job in a weekend, and Sauber really struggled to do that last year. They had some strong qualifiers. They didn't really pull that through into the race. So they've got to kind of operationally be better, strategically be better, and understand the car through a weekend. The Alpine drivers both out of contract, so too the Sauber drivers, so too both Haas drivers as well. And we saw a change of personnel. Um, also, Will at Haas, Gunter Steiner is out, Ayo Komatsu is in, Simone Resta also out, De Gorda in. Uh, Haas, your thoughts on their testing, where they may sit, because they are also another team who are really very much damping expectations. They set the benchmark incredibly low at the start of the season, and when they launched the car and said, look, we're not expecting anything, this essentially is a period of rebuilding for us. The first couple of days of testing showed just that. It was very understated going through the processes. The car didn't look fast. Everybody had them down, I think, P10 in their general running order. Then day three, they suddenly started to show some pace and they suddenly started to look okay. And I was flying back on, uh, when was it? Sat so Friday night, Friday Saturday, night morning, Saturday morning, uh, <laughs> back to the UK with a couple of the Haas guys. And they were like, we're actually really happy. Okay. with the way the test ended. So much so, quotes out of Ayo Komatsu today, he hopes the team can finish as high as eighth in the Constructors' Championship this year. So there's a lot more positivity at that team than there was before testing began. So I think overall they've had a great week. And I think one thing to point out for Haas as well is that while they may not have lit up the timing sheets, they were incredibly reliable. They had very, the very... Of anyone the most laps of anyone you know no real big technical gremlins uh, to report back as well and i think that that does yeah. count for a lot let's take a look then at how our very first race weekend of the season shapes up okay your schedule then for our first race weekend this is a wednesday of course thursday fp1 2 30 pm fp2 
6 p.m. here, track time at the Bahrain International Circuit. Friday, FP3, that will be at 3.30 p.m. with qualifying coming on Friday night at 7 p.m. Race day, and for the first race of the season, the first two races of the season, it will be on a Saturday. The Bahrain Grand Prix and the start of the 2024 season is 6 p.m. And Tech Talk is also out on Friday as well, so do check out all of the features that F1 TV has to offer. Well, that's it, chaps. We are well and truly back. First race weekend is kicking off in style. Can I have final thoughts and predictions, please? Uh, it's difficult to look past Max, I think, for the opening win of the season, but I think it'll be a double Ferrari podium. I think Charles will be second, Carlos third. Nice. I agree with that. <laughs> Thanks, Jelly. <laughs> I, th I can see Checo. Max, Charles, Checo. Uh, I'm sticking with my prediction at testing, which is Max for the win, Charles P2, uh, and Oscar Orlando P3. McLaren stepping yeah. up. OK. Nice stuff. Thank you very much indeed. Oh, I have 10 seconds. I can give you mine. I'm going to say you're Max. Carlos, Fernando, why not? Wow. <laughs> uh, here we go. That is it from us here in the paddock for this weekend warm-up from the Bahrain International Circuit, lit up in the night sky. Of course, this a twilight race, and we get the joys of night pictures like this. We cannot wait to bring you all of the action heading into our first race weekend here. Every hour of free practice, qualifying, of course, on Friday and our race day on Saturday as well. Thank you very much to Lawrence Bretto, Will Buxton and Jodie and Palmer for their thoughts. To all of you for watching, we will see you tomorrow for FP1. Bye for now. Join us at Bahrain International Circuit. The season starts here. Let's go. The battle for second place in the Grand Prix. Perez to the inside. Yes. Verstappen dominates the Bahrain Grand Prix. Perfect one, too.